This video seemed appropriate for Avatar, Adam, so here we are. With the Quest 2's affordable price point and more and more people getting into VR, I see more people searching for ways on how they can get the most out of their quests, one being full body tracking. Unfortunately, there's no easy plug and play way to do this, as the way that the Quest tracks things is different from the way a PC VR headset does, but technically there are solutions out there. I do want to warn you that it's not going to be perfect, there's going to be a lot of troubleshooting you may have to do, calibration may be finicky, and it's not going to be cheap. Expect to spend at least 600 plus dollars to get this working since you will need base stations and of course trackers. If I haven't scared you off by now, let's get into the nitty gritty. Like I mentioned, you're going to need at least three trackers, one for each foot and one for your waist. You can technically have as many as you want for elbow and knee tracking, etc. depending on the program you want to use full body tracking for, but three to start with should be just fine. You can get either the 2018 trackers, which have the blue logo, or the 3.0 trackers, which have a black logo, or any other tracker as long as SteamVR is able to detect it. Just know that you may need to buy a certain type of base station depending on what your trackers are. More on that in a sec. You'll also need straps for the trackers to attach them to your body, which by the way, for convenience, I'll post a kit link in the video description with everything you need in one place to look at. You're also going to need base stations, although technically you only need one. I highly recommend getting two to make sure that you are able to get tracking from more than just one angle, meaning if you turned around, you would basically lose tracking. Two can cover your play space much more effectively, and I recommend getting a 2.0 Steam VR base station because no matter what tracker you get, it will work with it. And you'll also get a lot better tracking and less glitching versus the 1.0 HTC base stations in which you can also only use trackers with the blue logo on them. As far as software recommendations, I highly recommend getting virtual desktop for connecting to your PC versus AirLink for a couple of different reasons that I'll get into later. Virtual desktop is $19.99 on the Quest Store. Make sure you also download and install SteamVR on your PC, the OpenVR Space Calibrator, which I'll link below, and you may also want OVR advanced settings for play space customization. Note that full body tracking will only work with games bought on Steam VR, not on Quest standalone. So make sure that you have a gaming PC or a PC that's strong enough to handle playing VR games. Unfortunately, that means that yes, you do need a computer as this will not work standalone. Once you've gathered all the materials you need, let me show you step by step how to get this set up. I'll go over some other troubleshooting advice to get the best performance out of your trackers on a Quest 2 near the end of this video. Ideally, you won't run into too many snags, but realistically, you probably will. First, I'm going to quickly run you through setting up your base stations. If you're using 1.0 base stations, change the channel or the letter on the front on one base station to B and the other to C. Do this by pressing the button on the back to cycle through the channels. If you're using 2.0 base stations, they should be set to different channels automatically by SteamVR. You can check by hovering over it in the SteamVR window. You may not be able to see your base stations show up on SteamVR until you turn on a tracker, and you will probably need a remote way of turning on your base stations since you don't have a Lighthouse-based headset. If you have an Android phone, I recommend the app Lighthouse PM or BS Companion if you're on iOS. Mounting them on the wall is preferable versus on something standing like a tripod because if you get any vibrations, it will totally throw your tracking and calibration off. The best position will be opposing corners of your room placed above your head and tilted slightly down, also making sure that they can see each other. All you need to do is plug them in using the power cord. They don't attach to your computer in any way nor need Bluetooth. Once the light at the top of the base stations turns green, that means that they are on. Now we need to set up your trackers. You need to turn them on in a specific order and label them appropriately within SteamVR. I also recommend physically labeling your trackers, especially the one that you used to initially calibrate with in case there are issues down the line. To save time on this video, I already made one on tracker setup which you can watch here and start at around the one minute mark. Once your trackers are connected to SteamVR and you can see them, turn all of them off except for one. If you haven't already, install OpenVR Space Calibrator so it'll be ready to go when we need it. Now we need to connect your Quest 2 to your PC. While you can technically do this for free with AirLink, I recommend using Virtual Desktop because of the stage tracking setting it has under the streaming section. Stage tracking will help a ton when it comes to keeping things synced and calibrated. Without stage tracking, every time you start the quest or leave the Guardian boundary, you may have to recalibrate. 
Virtual Desktop also offers better controller latency and a ton of other settings you can mess with to tailor your experience. Make sure you have both the Virtual Desktop app on your Quest and the launcher for your desktop, which you can download at vrdesktop.net. Make sure the desktop streamer is open and has no conflicting issues, then launch Virtual Desktop in your Quest and connect to your computer. Launch Steam VR through Virtual Desktop and make sure all of your trackers are turned off except for one. Once you enter the Steam home environment, click on the menu button on your left controller and open the Open VR Space Calibrator on your Steam dashboard. You should see your controllers on the left side of the list and your tracker on the right. Select the right Quest controller and a tracker then pick slow calibration as this allows it to track for longer but more accurately. Then click start calibration. While calibrating, put your tracker on your arm or hand while holding your right controller and move it around slowly in a figure eight pattern. Your tracker should be calibrated once finished. Now you should be able to turn on your other two trackers and they should automatically be brought in and calibrated properly. If you want to now use your trackers in VR chat, bring up your Steam dashboard again and launch VR chat through it. Press the Y button on your controller to bring up the menu, then select the Calibrate Full Body Tracking option. Line up the circles that represent your trackers with your avatar's body, strike a T-pose to match, then click the triggers when you're happy with where things are. Depending on your avatar, you may find that you don't properly line up with the floor, and this is where OVR Advanced Settings comes in handy. You can use the Height Offset function in Offsets to adjust your height to be higher or lower as needed. If you want to use full body tracking with Live, simply open up Live from Steam, make sure you have an avatar profile set up as camera, look down at the floor and you should see a green circle. Hover your cursor over the circle until it fills and opens up a menu. Mark the checkboxes on the left for the body parts you have tracked. You may have to do a T-post calibration, which you can do by going here, or if you need to adjust anything manually, you can also do so here. For a deeper dive on live avatars, you'll want to check out this video which goes over how to use it with your broadcasting software, different camera settings, and anything else you might need to know. Now for some issues that you might come across. Calibration and tracking issues are going to be the most common. You need to prevent your quest from going to sleep by making sure to change the sleep time in your settings, but you can also put tape over your sensor. If it turns off or goes to sleep, you'll need to recalibrate all over again. If you find that the trackers appear off, take your tracker that you used the first time for calibration and run OpenVR Space Calibrator again with it. If you find that it still seems off, keep calibrating again, but this time be conscious to move it around in different angles, as the more angles it can capture, the more accurate it'll be. Other ways to ensure the best possible quality of tracking include covering any reflective surfaces like mirrors, windows, or monitors, as they can sometimes interfere with the infrared tracking. Make sure your base stations can actually see each other and are in opposing corners of your play area. Make sure that your router is broadcasting at 5 GHz as opposed to 2.4 GHz. Finally, be mindful of the trackers themselves and your headset camera. Anything that passes over or covers them can also mess up tracking. If you notice your floor height in the Steam Guardian is different to the floor of your Quest Guardian, you might run into some issues where you need to run a Steam VR room setup in order for it to get the proper floor height and scale of your play space. If you need to do this, run Steam VR through Virtual Desktop and turn on your trackers. While in VR, view the desktop and run the Steam VR room setup from your desktop Steam library. Choose Standing Room Only, and when you get to the part about setting the height, continue wearing your headset and make sure to enter your height manually. Click Done and check to see if the Steam VR floor is in the correct height by touching it with your controller. If the floor height is not where your controller is touching, run the setup again and enter a shorter or taller value for your height and keep doing this until your Steam VR floor height matches your real life floor height. While this is not my preferred way of using trackers, as personally the cost is not worth the quality and potential pain that you're going to have with calibration issues, this does get asked a lot and might be a gateway for some of you considering getting a PC VR headset. If you have any questions, I highly recommend checking out and asking over at the Mixed VR subreddit. They are extremely knowledgeable over there. I might go over an even cheaper option in the future, although the quality of tracking will be not as good as this video and potentially even worse, but it is cheaper, so let me know in the comments below if this is something you'd still be curious to see. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one.